Hi everyone, so welcome to part two of this series, I suppose, of using MuseScore to assist in your practicing. And today we'll try and look at how we can use the MuseScore mobile app to assist us in making practicing a bit more comfortable or easier, both for ourselves and hopefully if you're a teacher, for your students. Here we are in MuseScore Studio and I've made this lip flexibility for trombones. Uh, it's a fairly standard you know, kind of exercise that we do with trombones. And I've just written a piano part for it because why not let's give them something to listen to. And so this goes chromatically downwards through all the different positions of the trombone. Yes, I am a trombonist and I enjoy this kind of thing. These are some of my favorite warm-up exercises to do. Um, but I know they can be a bit tedious for the students. So why not let's give them something to either play along with. Uh, it gives them the notation on their phone uh, or their tablet perhaps. Then maybe they've got an iPad. Anyway, let's see how we can do this. So I've saved this file on my computer. There are ways to go and publish this uh, to musical.com. However, um, I do full full disclosure. I have a musical.com account, um, a, a pro version. I've paid for that because I find it useful to find all kinds of uh, music for ensembles and things that I work with. But I know that many teachers don't want to have to pay things. One of the great things about musical is that it's completely free. So let's do all of this free. Uh, so I've saved this to my desktop computer here it is there's the lip flexibility file and let's put that on the side here let's open up MuseScore and this is a MuseScore account that I created for free um, I linked it to an email that I have I did not pay anything for this you can see it says GoPro so this is the the basic version that is completely free and unfortunately yes MuseScore does love offering you these permanent, seemingly permanent sales on MuseScore, which is great, you know, it is good that they want to do that. So let's upload the score um, and see how we can get this to our students on their mobile devices. Drop your music here. All right, so let's go and drop the music. Okay, so while it's uploading, they ask us some questions. Is it based on existing music? I'm going to say no, because I've made the piano pot myself. The lip flexibility is based on someone else's, but I think that's okay. Uh, there is no education, unfortunately. So I'll just choose classical and let's say a description. I'm also going to use show parts because if possible, we would like to you know, separate out the piano and the trombone and only see the trombone. Uh, I'm not sure if this works yet. We'll go and check it out in this video. Okay, and I'm happy with all of that so I can publish and we'll just need to give it some time to process as you can see it's still processing the score and so let's go to our scores all right we'll come back in a little while and move over to the MuseScore mobile app okay and we're back so let's open up our MuseScore app And I'm going to search for the one that I made, which was called Lip Flexibility for Trombone. Probably should have given it a number or something. There it is, Trombone McD. Okay, now you may notice that already this is fairly crowded and uh, small notation not terribly easy to use and so let's try and improve things for our students as they're practicing this warm-up exercise uh, obviously we can play it and already you'll probably notice that the balance is a bit better than on the musical studio app uh, and that's because it's just using general MIDI sounds. It's not using the proper Muse sounds, which are intended for expression and all those kind of things. So in a way, um, this is quite nice for the lip flexibilities because it is just a, a simple study or an exercise. Good for us to do. Okay, we can also go into full screen. That already helps, just remove some clutter. We can tap just to come back to that, but there's our full screen in the bottom right corner of that bar, 
not sure if you can tell that, next to the play button and the playhead cursor that we can remove on and off, uh, which is also useful. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. So, of course, we don't need our trombonists to see the piano part. That's the first thing. So I'm going to press the down arrow and go to the mixer and let us make the piano visible. No, we want the trombone not visible. Well, actually, we want the trombone visible. That's a little confusing UI, but anyway, that's fine. Uh, okay, so now it's just the trombone. That's good. And we've got some nice layout as well. Uh, I wonder if we can make this a little bit bigger. Oh, we can zoom. Oh, that's quite nice. We can zoom in a little bit if we want to. That's great. And we can also set that as the default. That's very, very useful. And very nicely, it plays with the piano as well. Uh, but we could even then say, remove the trombone sound. And now it's just the accompaniment, but we can still see that. So let's make this full screen. And we're ready to go. Ah, but we forgot something. Because very, very cool is on this uh, musical mobile app, they still have... Where is it? Sorry, in the metronome, they have the pre-count, which can be very useful. So let's use that. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, play full screen. Two, one. All right, so that's a, that's a really useful feature um, and it doesn't take too long to set up once you get used to it. I think a couple of times going through this and your students will fairly quickly get used to going through these things of, you know, going to the mixer, turning off the piano, trombone sound, but only seeing the trombone. Uh, of course, we could use solo as well for the piano part if, we, if you've got multiple instruments. Anyway, there's various ways you can work around that. And this is where we see this practice mode, which I have not explored yet because it's a paid version. And, you know, my thing is always let's do the free things as far as we can before we start paying for perhaps unnecessary things. We can, of course, as always, have a, a metronome in there, which comes in the pre count as well. That's quite nice. It's not as easy to move around i'm grabbing the okay no that's fairly easy but you do have to grab the playback head to move it you can't just click somewhere like we're used to doing in musical studio but that's okay the other thing we have is the looping function so let's say i'm struggling with this third position one and i'll say loop and i can move it to both of those bars two two one I can stop that and take the loop off. Uh, and when it, its default is that it will loop the bar that you are in, which is fine. That's generally acceptable. Uh, yeah, so it's not as easy to move around in as it is on the on the uh, Music or Studio app, but still fairly useful to do. I, I think I would especially do things like these um, studies or warm-ups. Uh, I can imagine for vocalists, you could uh, you could you know write these warm-ups for them with the lyrics, uh, with a piano backing, so that they've got some kind of harmonic basis to listen to as they're doing their warm-ups, and then you don't have to worry the accompanist with those kind of warm-ups. So it could be really really useful stuff. And one more thing that we haven't looked at is, of course, like in the MuseScore app, we can change the tempo percentage it doesn't actually tell us what we're currently on which is rather worrying oh there it is okay so we can change it let's say we need to start it a bit slower let's go at 72 percent and you get the idea um, and one more thing that we have here is we can download it we can save it we can share it we can rate it but what i want to show us now 
is that we can add this to a set. And so each person, each student could do this. There we go. Uh, and so I could make a new one and say, this is my trombone warm-ups. And that's fine. I'll keep this one private because it's just for me. I'll create the new set. And it's been added to the set. And now that means that if I want to come to my warm-ups, I know that all my scores are in there that my teacher has sent me, for instance. And this could be really useful. All right. So the MuseScore app, very useful app to have. And a nice connection with the MuseScore Studio app as well that you can write things and then send it over the internet if you have an account. Obviously, the person who has the app also needs to have a MuseScore account, so there is mm, a little bit of that needed as well. Happy using MuseScore. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can answer and find out for you. Bye for now.